I maybe everybody knows what short selling is. Maybe most some people don't know about it. So I just wanna mention it. I've been asked this a lot on my own personal YouTube. So mm -hmm. how do you short sell? Many people don't even know that you can earn money even if the market goes down, stays flat, that with options or it goes up. Most people generally yeah. Think, yeah. I've seen a lot of questions about it too. I've seen people like, so short selling does use like leverage, right? Because the shares are borrowed and a lot of people don't know that. And it's kind of like an interesting introduction to leverage um, and also like taking more complex directional assumptions. So let's hop into these slides. I'm gonna throw a few positions on and we can talk about those afterwards. But yeah, let's talk about short selling. Chat, feel free to throw out your opinions about short selling because a lot of people are opinionated about this. So starting for short selling here, what is short selling? Well, short selling allows investors to profit from stocks or other securities when they go down in value, literally the opposite as just buying them. And as you said it, you get a, they're leveraged. Stocks are actually borrowed. You don't own them. So at one point you gotta end up giving them. And here in the, in the screen, you can see short interest I personally like to see this when I'm normally shorting a stock, if I'm going mm -hmm. a little bit heavy. I think this is a great tip for everybody here watching if you like to short. Seeing and watching short interest is very important and most people tend to don't even look at it or don't even know about it. Short interest is just the percentage of shares that are being shorted at a given time, which is public information. Mm -hmm. A, a stock or a security that has 20% or more of their sh shares shorted is considered very high. And you can actually see this information on Yahoo Finance, on other websites. It's very common to see sh percentage of short in shorted shares. And when does short selling make sense? Well, obviously, I think this is something a little bit obvious and at the same time, not too not much, but normally when you think the stock is, first of all, overvalued or it's going to change direction, it's going to go to a down movement. And when it's also the market on a the bear market contracting as of today and yesterday, well, that's when it makes a little bit more sense and to take advantage of it. And for a little bit of historical context, I'm looking at um, the street right now. But the, before the GME squeeze, before the GameStop squeeze, um, it was 140% short interest. There was actually more shorting than shares available, um, which is how heavily the industry was shorting it. So now I think that dumb money has come out, actually. Um, I think that more people are going to be kind of interested in this, which is pretty interesting. But um, I think like, yeah, just based on my experience as a trader, short interest is definitely one of the most common metrics that people tend to look at when determining whether or not to short a stock or um, to be contrarian. Yes, totally. Sure. But there are also several risks on, on shorting. The first, the first one, as you already mentioned, is a leveraged position. You actually have to borrow the shares. You don't know them. So the risk is that it can be unlimited downside, well, not mm -hmm. downside, but unlimited um, losses with shorting shares directly. Also, they're more expensive than buying puts, which I want to talk on the next week, comparing directly, shorting directly against the buying puts. I think this will be an interesting segment for people to watch and learn. And well, when you buy a stock against shorting it, the most you can lose is the stock going to zero and mm -hmm. while you short the stock, the max on profits can be unlimited. Well, max loss can be unlimited, not profit, sorry. For sure. Your max loss and then uh, limited profit potential, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So there are several risks, expensive and max loss can be unlimited here. What, what are your opinion on shorting shares, Julia? It's something, so I kind of, um, okay, so I think like there are three different popular ways that you can really short a stock. And um, I think like the one that's the most talked about is like directly shorting a stock, um, which is I think like middle level of complexity, but you can also like buy an inverse ETF. So ETFs that move the opposite direction of whatever like index or sector or market that they're tracking, tracking. and you can also buy leveraged versions of that. Um, I think like the ETFs are definitely like the most accessible because 
Um, it's just like a, an asset that you buy um, that you usually don't want to hold for too long because they can accumulate losses um, pretty quickly. Shorting, which is a little bit more risky and a little bit more complicated. And then you have puts, which are like probably the most complex option. I kind of skipped the middle step. I started out with inverse ETFs, kind of skipped the shorting part of it directly. So I don't really short and I, you know, it's not really a common strategy that I do. Mostly stick with the puts or some kind of put spreads just because you have um, different parameters that you can kind of tune. You can choose the duration of the put, you can choose the delta, you can choose number shares, all that kind of stuff. Um, so you have a little bit more um, more complexity, but more flexibility when it comes to the put. So that's definitely what I mostly focus on. Don't really short a ton. Yeah, yeah. So buying an inverse ETF like SQQQ, the inverse ETF of QQQ, in case it's never never like three times. Uh, it's not a good idea to hold it for a long mm -hmm. time. It's actually meant if you see the old time graph of SQQQ or any inverse ETF, it's just a downslope. You can profit from them and benefit short term, but medium term and long term, I think it's not a good idea. And then Villana also made a very good point. So like we mostly just focus on puts because that's like a very common like bearish strategy, but you can also sell calls in high vol and then buy puts in low vol. Um, so you can choose either option basically, um, and depending on your directional assumption, choose to go long or short either one. So you can do either, you can be uh, bearish on a stock using either type of option for sure. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah, thanks, Dylan. Well, this is for the short selling, the last slide we have for short selling. This is uh, how short selling works. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes it's a little bit more complex than just going against. It's actually, you gotta borrow the shares from the broker or for somebody else. You gotta sell them right away and then buy them back. So literally this infographic shows what a short selling is. You borrow, borrow stock from broker, sell shares at a high price, let her buy back at lower price, mm -hmm. turn the stock to the broker. I really like this infographic for people who understand better, who are more visual. I like that too. Profit if stock falls, loss if stock rises. Simple as that. For sure. Yeah. This is, I like this because I, it took me kind of a while to wrap my head around short selling um, because there's a bunch of different steps that are done on the back end of the broker that you don't see. So kind of having explained, it's not always intuitive. Um, so yeah, it's, this is super interesting. Um, I like the graphic a lot too. I had actually a very interesting conversation uh, yesterday because um, I was talking about dumb money with one of my coworkers. And he kind of said that like short selling was really, you know, they were talking about in the movie as this like strategy that retail investors were kind of using recklessly that they didn't really understand. And now zero DTEs are almost like the new version of that because of how much zero DTEs have boomed in popularity. And they're another like complex strategy that people might be using that, that they don't necessarily understand completely. Um, so I thought that was like a kind of interesting um, parallel that he pointed out. Yeah. Yep, true. So this is a process. There are three main steps. The first one, second one, and the third one. So this is it for short selling. I just wanted to bring this up or yeah. later on a clip for people to understand better. I think it's very commonly, but sometimes maybe people don't understand what literally is a short selling. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? Just sell, put sell, click sell on your broker and that's it. But there's a more complex steps on the back end, as you said it. And also like a lot of risk that you might be assuming that's not necessarily clear. So um, it, this is true with like any more complex, any more complex strategy than just like buying or selling a stock, um, it, especially with options. So this was, I think this was super helpful. Hopefully this guy's, uh, this get, you know, taught you guys something new, um, but super interesting.